why some women are more prone to yeast infections than others. Always itchy down below? Women who are plagued by chronic yeast infections tend to suffer from at least four or more per year, says Natasha Johnson, MD, director of the Vulvovaginal Disease Center at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Here are some of the most common reasons why you might be stuck on an endless cycle of monostat. 1. You pop pills before you hop on a prescription, be sure you really need it. Eopil who are on chronic antibiotics or are frequently on them are at an increased risk for yeast infections, says Johnson. Never feel the burn in on meds all the time? Lucky you, some ladies are more prone to the antibiotic effect than others, she notes. But in general, a week-long course is enough to wipe out all of your healthy bacteria along with all the bad stuff, allowing yeast to overgrow and an infection to creep up. Sometimes, you can't do anything about a script. So stock up on yogurt with active Achidophilus for the weak bacteria that exists naturally in the vagina and can help treat yeast, says Johnson. 2. Your blood sugar levels are crazy research suggests that if you have diabetes, you may also suffer from or below the belt infections but Johnson notes that the bigger problem is uncontrolled diabetes. So if yeast seems to be a semi-regular occurrence and you're peeing all the time, super thirsty and hungry, or feel any tingling or numbness in your hands and feet, consider seeing a doc. Fluctuations in blood sugar levels can open the floodgates for yeast to grow, says Johnson. Once you've got your sugar levels under control, either with medication or lifestyle changes like diet and exercise, you'll likely lessen the blow. 3. Your immune system suppressed Check your medicine cabinet. Anything that suppresses your immune system, like corticosteroids and prednisone or meds like cumi or for rheumatoid arthritis can predispose you to yeast, says Johnson. That's mostly because when your body's defense system is not in tip-top shape, it can keep everything in balance. You might also notice yeast elsewhere, like in your mouth a whitish, cottage cheese Y layer on your tongue or inner cheeks, says Johnson. Talk to your doctor if you think this is the case. While antifungal medications can help, it's best to address the root of the issue first and any treatment changes that can be made. Consider probiotics, too, which can help build up your good bacteria, keeping issues at bay. 4. You're making avoidable mistakes no one's perfect. And while we know we shouldn't do things like sit around in our stinky workout clothes, religiously wear thongs, forgo cotton underwear, or live in a bikini, it happens. So to kick yeast to the curb, start by nixing your own bad behaviors. Skip scented feminine products, always white front to back, make sure to change after that HIIT class, and let your legs breathe every now and then that is give up the tight jeans only dress code, says Johnson. Hose are all things you have control over, she says. He can be modified to reduce your risk. 5. It's in your genes here's the thing, while yeast, in excess, can be annoying, we have it in our vaginas all the time in low levels, says Johnson. 20 to 50 percent of women have yeast without symptoms and are totally fine, she says. So why are some of us just oh so unfortunately faced with itch? This one's a big bummer, apparently, some of us simply have a genetic susceptibility to the problem, says Johnson. Who also might be an unlucky person who happens to have a type of yeast that causes symptoms, she adds. The good news? Your doc can prescribe preventative antifungals taken weekly or twice weekly, in travel if this is a case, says Johnson. So touch base with her to find out.